I don't know about you, but if some random guy showed up to my house and was that demanding, I would be like, get out. Get out. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Leanna if you're new, and welcome to episode 14 of Makeup and Mythology, a series on my channel where I do my makeup and also tell you an ancient myth. So last time we covered Kamadeva, the Hindu god of love and passion and human carnal desire, and specifically the story in which he disturbed Lord Shiva's meditation. This week we are covering Anansi, a West African folktale character. Shout out to one of my viewers, John, for suggesting this one a while ago. Just a reminder that I do take suggestions, so if you have any leave them down in the comment section below. So I have never heard of Anansi before, so I'm excited to learn something new today and tell his story today. So Anansi means spider in the Akan language, and according to Wikipedia, the Akan are considered a meta-ethnicity living in the southern regions of present-day Ghana and the Côte d'Ivoire, aka the Ivory Coast, in West Africa. So Anansi, meaning spider, often takes the shape of a spider. Sometimes he has a spider body, and sometimes he's just a straight-up spider. He can change forms. Sometimes he's a person with eight limbs, but he's usually depicted as a spider with a human head. He is sometimes even considered to be a god of knowledge and stories. I think this is because the most popular myth involving him is that he wanted to be the smartest and wisest being there ever was, um, so he went around and collected everybody's wisdom and knowledge and stories so that he would like hoard them all and nobody would be wiser than him, like nobody would have more wisdom than him. And eventually he came to realize that wisdom is best and most useful when shared with others. So he took the wisdom that he collected and distributed it into the land instead of hoarding it to himself. And that is how wisdom became introduced to the land. And the moral of the story is that wisdom is most useful when it is shared. It's definitely the most known story about Anansi, but in my opinion, it's far from the most interesting one. Just a little bit more about Anansi though. He's a bit of a trickster, okay? He's definitely famous for his cunning and creativity and wit. He's very street smart, and he is famous for his ability to outsmart his opponents. And when I say he's a trickster, I mean he leads people to truth through example, puzzles, twists, and turns of fate. So he's a good trickster because he teaches moral and ethical values, and he's often highlighted as a protagonist. He's the main character. It's his world. We just live in it. So there are a lot of different myths about Anansi, and one of my favorite ones that I read about was the story of how he came to be married to his wife, Aso. And I cannot, for the life of me, find out if Aso was also a spider or not. So a long, long time ago, Aso was not married to Anansi. In fact, she was married to another man, and his name was Aquasi the Jealous One, with hyphens in it and everything. Aquasi the Jealous One. If that was his birth name, then damn, his parents didn't even really give him a chance. So obviously, if that's his name, he can't just go be not jealous. Jealousy was his primary personality trait. He was really committed to his role. So he was really possessive of his beautiful wife, Aso, so much so that he didn't even want anybody to look at her, didn't even want anybody to breathe the same air as her. So he literally built an entire small village where only the two of them lived. This man is committed to his name. One big reason he was so insecure and worried about Aso being stolen from him by another man was because he was infertile. So he didn't want her to have other options besides him to, you know, have children or anything. Thing. So one day the god Nayam, the sky god, whose name means he who sees and knows everything, was just like, you know, they've been married for so long, a quasi is hella infertile, and also got these birthing hips, and they're just going to waste, and that upsets me. So I'm just gonna announce that whoever can impregnate her can have her as his wife. Never mind what Aso wants, you know, it doesn't matter. Also, one thing that I'm kind of unsure about is why Nayam cares so much. I feel like he's just bored sitting up there in the sky, so he sees everybody as his like sims, and he just really wants Aso to get pregnant so he can do the 1000 baby challenge. So anyway, all those young men who were bursting at the seams with sperm heard Nayam's announcement that whoever could impregnate Aso could have her as his wife. They tried to lay their hands on her, or like capture her, but she didn't let that happen, which, you know, good for her. And so Anansi, our main character, is just sitting back, observing all of this, and so he goes to Nayam, he's like, hey, I'm your guy. 
I can get her pregnant. I can help you with your 1,000 baby challenge. And Nayeon was like, OMG, really? And Anansi was like, sure, I just need some medicine powder for guns and bullets, basically like hunting materials. And Nayeon was like, okay, I guess, sure. So after this, Anansi went to a bunch of villages and told them, Nayeon told him to bring the medicine and bullets so that they could go hunting for him. Whatever they hunted would be offerings for the god. And they were to go hunting for meat. Anansi then told the villagers that he would be back to collect their meat so he could give it to Nayeon. And the villagers were like, hmm, not sus at all. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> so they agreed and Anansi left them to it, but he was not one for idling around. He took advantage of his time and while they were out hunting, he wove a palm leaf basket for collecting all the game that the villagers hunted. And he went around collecting all the meat that these people had hunted and right afterward, he headed to a quasi the jealous one's mini village to steal his girl. So Anansi came upon a river where a quasi and also drank from and took some of the meat and placed it into the water, which is nasty. <laughs> So he took the basket with him, which still had heaps of meat in it, and reached Aquazi's village. Aso saw Anansi and called out to her husband, and Aquazi asked Anansi who he was. Anansi replied that he was on a journey, and that Nayam ordered him to rest there. And Aquazi was like, oh, okay, not sus at all. You are welcome to stay here. So Aso noticed that Anansi had left some meat in the river and told him about it. Yo, man, you left your meat in our drinking water. <laughs> and he was like, oh, you know that old thing. I don't need it. You can have it if you want. You could feed your pets with it. So Asa was like, okay, I guess. And so she collected the meat and offered it to her husband. Anansi asked Aso to cook him some food too. And she was like, okay, I guess. And she was gonna make fufu, which is a dough made from boiled and pounded starchy ground foods like plantains, cassava, or malanga. So Aso prepared fufu for Anansi, but he was like, oh, it's not enough. Could you please use a larger pot? And Aso was like, Okay, I guess this guy's really demanding. I don't know about you, but if some random guy showed up to my house and was that demanding, I would be like, get out, get out. Or at least I'd be really, really annoyed. So also is probably feeling a little annoyed at this point. And Anansi offered her more of the meat that he had, but he was like, you can only cook the thighs. And also was like, Okay, I guess. So Aso finished cooking and served the food and Anansi was like, your fufu is bland, woman. And instead of being on his wife's side, Aquazi was like, you heard him. Go get some salt for the nice man. The mysterious man who just randomly showed up at her house. And Anansi was like, no, no, Aquazi, that's rude to boss her around while she's eating. Don't talk to your wife like that. So Anansi suggested that Aquazi go get him the salt instead. And Aquazi was like, okay, fine, I'll go. And in this moment, Anansi snuck the laxative medicine from his pouch and put it in Aquazi's fufu. And when Aquazi returned with the salt, Anansi was like, I'm full now. I don't need salt anymore. <laughs> Bruh, this guy. So Aquazi was like, okay, fine, whatever. And he sat the salt aside and began eating his fufu again. And he was like, hey man, I just realized I don't know your name. And uh, you're, you're not ready for this. <laughs> Anansi was like, my name is rise up and make love to Aso with hyphens and everything. <laughs> He was basically just like, I'm Mr. Steal Your Girl, motherfucker, which is so modern of him. <laughs> and at this point, Aquazi shot his wife a look and he was like, did you, did you hear that? Or was that just me? And Asa was like, yep. And then Aquazi was like, okay, well, we've got a spare bedroom. You can stay here tonight. <laughs> they literally thought that's what his name was and it had like no other meaning. <laughs> so they prepped the spare bedroom for him and Anansi said that he couldn't sleep there. He said he was a soul washer and I'm not entirely sure what a soul washer is. And he was forbidden from sleeping in closed rooms. And then Aquazi was like, okay then, Mr. Rise Up and Make Love to Aso. Where do you want to sleep then? And Anansi was like, I have to sleep in a house that belongs to Naya. To do otherwise would mean making a quasi equal to Nayam, which would be very disrespectful. And so Anansi was like, can you just get me a sleeping mat and I'll sleep on the floor in front of your bedroom. And a quasi was like, okay. <laughs> so that night Anansi laid upon the sleeping mat waiting for the couple to fall asleep. And while he waited, he sang a song to the gods with the lyrics, we shall achieve something today. Eventually, he drifted off to sleep and he woke up to a quasi calling him through the door. And because he was sleeping on the ground, I'm guessing his body was blocking um, a quasi from exiting. And remember earlier that day, he had taken some laxatives. 
So Akwazi really, really needed to shit, and Anansi was just blocking the door. Akwazi didn't want to call him, rise up, and make love to Aso, because that's just weird. So he was like, hey, hey, yo, get out of the way, like, I need to go, I need to go take a shit. But Anansi just pretended that he didn't hear him, and Akwazi was like, fine, fine, rise up and make love to Aso, please move so I can take a shit. So he did. And while Akwazi was in the bathroom, guess what Anansi did? He rose up and he said to Aso, who was also awake, he said to her, did you hear what he said? <laughs> he said, rise up and make love to Aso. And Aso was like, yeah, he did say that. So they fucked. And Akwazi came back completely unaware of what had just happened and they went back to sleep. However, his stomach would trouble him for a total of nine times that night. So he would call out to rise up and make love to Aso, nine times. And each time, Anansi rose up and made love to Aso because that's what Akwazi told him to do. <laughs> Bruh. And the next morning, Anansi just dipped and two moons eventually passed and Aso became visibly pregnant, which confused Akwazi because he was like, wait, I'm infertile, so how are you pregnant? And Aso was like, well, I mean, you told that spider guy to make love to me like nine times, so like... And Akwazi decided to take her to Nayim's village, I guess to find Anansi. And on the way there, Aso gave birth and they took the child there and told Nayim what had happened. And Nayim was like, what? Who did this? Then they spotted Anansi there and they were like, oh my God, it's that guy, it's that guy. And Anansi tried to hide, but they found him and caused him to fall over and dirty himself. And so Anansi was like, you made me fall. I'm the soul washer. You've defiled me. How dare you? How dare you? So then Akwazi was seized by Nayim's guards for disrespecting the gods and they made him sacrifice a sheep. And Akwazi was like completely humiliated and was like, okay, okay, I give up. Anansi can just have Aso, I guess. And so Aso became Anansi's wife and that's pretty much it. That was, that was a wild ride. Um, is there a moral here? I'm, I'm not really sure. I read that this story is supposed to explain how jealousy came into the tribe, how jealousy became a thing. Yeah, you know, Anansi just kind of got what he wanted. It just kind of fell into his lap or laps since he has multiple limbs. Another male Mary Sue, just like Perseus was. So like I mentioned before, there are a ton of other interesting Anansi myths. I just thought that this was one of the most interesting ones. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Source of all your light, oh Someone's calling, it's not me there Screaming, talk about your destiny But sun.